Hello, hello, this is Anon Jr. and today we're playing on the Coffee Craft server. For today's episode, we're going to build the Community Iron Farm. Between finishing recording last week's episode and the live stream, Rayest found a village um, relatively nearby my base. And she mentioned that she had cut a boat channel out from the village to the shores where I'm at. So uh, during that point in time, we went all... And we moved two villagers over to my base and three over to the community center. You'll notice we got a couple of projects marked out in whatever was handy. And uh, a funny cobblestone pillar that we'll get to in a little bit. And this is what we built in the live stream. This right here is our new trading hall villager breeder. We got the villager breeding in the back. As long as you keep feeding them food, they will breed, and even then they will cap out at 11. So there's nice natural uh, stopping point so that we don't have to worry about 832 villagers cramming into a square and exploding everywhere. Not that we've seen farms like that. And we've already got a few of the stations filled up. We got most of these guys up to master. We're also working on some of the more important librarian trades. And that's kind of an ongoing project. We're going to need about six of those guys and probably to cut a hole in this wall. And uh, I'm not sure about getting them up this hill, to be honest. But we'll figure that out, too. Part of... Uh... <laughs> okay, I mentioned the cobblestone pillar. The whole, the whole reason why we got that cobblestone pillar there is because someone, <clears throat> rest, um, killed one of the banner patrols uh, right near the villager trading hall and triggered a raid, you know, in our lovely, lovely iron armor. Yeah, I know, I got the diamond leggings, and, and so does Rayest, but uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty much still iron. And not at, not highly enchanted iron at all. So uh, that was about 60, 70 deaths apiece between Ray, Rayest, Arcadius, and myself. And uh, that, that ate up a couple hours worth of our time because we kept dying and dying and dying. And running out of, you know, weapons and armor to equip ourselves with and run at them and die yet again. So uh, I hope Rayest is done with that part. <laughs> Let's, um, I've got what I think are all the materials I need for the collection side and for the sky side. That kelp is so that way I can get the villagers uh, up in the sky a little bit easier. If you saw the live stream, live stream for season two, you'll know that Arcadius and I uh, railed the villagers up and it was, um, we can call it entertaining. Yeah, entertaining will work. And this time I'm going to try to figure out an easier way to make that happen. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see if I can make that happen. Uh, in the meantime, let me switch over to the creative testing world that I've got the design that I'm going to build here and show you pretty close to what the finished product's going to look like. All right, so here we are in a test world. This is a slightly modified version of the one that mspace dev has on his uh, GitHub repository. It's his uh, 700k test world that was originally built for 1.13, if I remember right. And I just upgraded to 1.14, added the data packs and whatnot that we have on the CoffeeCraft server. And it is a beautiful place to go testing out stuff like this. This is the design, pretty much of the, well, except for this part. That is not the right block. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> Ignore that. So, this is pretty much the uh, the basic design that we're going to build today. Not the most stylish build. It is a little square, I'll admit. But it is also a temporary sort of deal. Because what I'd like to do is, once we have enough iron, I would actually like to make... The, uh, the frame or even the building itself, a giant iron golem face. That might be something that I have to uh, bribe Arcadius into once we get enough iron to make that happen. This is definitely more storage than we had before. We're still going to do a filter for the, all the poppies. So the poppies will end up getting turned into bone meal. And uh, when I build this in the server, I'm actually going to rotate those guys 
just a little bit so that way the uh, golems are falling towards the front and back of the farm instead of off to either side. Since it's a square, it's going to be the same either way for them falling. Um, yes, we are going to need a few hoppers. I've set it up such that I can at least get as many hoppers across as we've got iron for currently. And I can just add in more hoppers as we go. As the season progresses, if we find that we need more storage space, um, which will be very interesting, but if we find that we need more storage space, I can continue wrapping this around this wall and even, oops, even this wall here. So we've got room to expand if we need it. We get our one little circuit over here in the corner to run the filter for the poppies. I'm probably not going to use co cobble as my filter. I've got some rotten potatoes because those won't go through into the uh, into the composter. And we need cobble for other stuff. But basic filtration. I am also going to make sure that all these hoppers with nothing above them have droppers on top of them. That should help keep the lag in check. And that's the collection side of things. They are all going into the corner this time instead of into a 3x3 three three pit like we did in Season 0. I'm hoping that this will be a little uh, more resource friendly while still maintaining the, uh, the kill rate that we need by tossing them into a corner there like that. So we got to... Water stream here, one in the corner there, one in the corner there, all pushing towards that far end there. And hopefully, hopefully that's all we need to manage there. The rates are pretty good, and the basic of the farm itself is going to, is just like we did in Season 0, based off of Doc M77's farm. Uh, I'll include a link to the, the video that we used the last time. I kind of like the way Pixel Rift explained it when he built his too, but again, he was building the exact same farm. I'm going to use some different profession tokens though, because those smokers are really expensive. So I'm going to use a loom, a composter, and a barrel, and uh, that way we can get the we can get the benefit of three different professions without you know expensive profession blocks like smokers, because we're not exactly made of materials just yet. And the idea is that we got a nice spawning station over here. They're scared by the zombie there. They create the golems because they're scared. They've got a workstation to work at, a bed to sleep at. And uh, if you really want the inner workings of how all this functions, I refer you to Doc m 77s video on this farm design. I did do a couple things different, though. I've got these slabs over here that I keep breaking. And that is to keep iron golems from spawning over on top of these areas. Um, we probably don't need the lights as long as we got the slabs over there. It is nice to be able to see what's going on up here. And uh, we had those lights when we built it the last go round. And I'm trying to remember if we had them for a particular reason or not. On the assumption that we had them there for a particular reason... I kept them in there in this go-round too. I'm probably also going to throw these lanterns up here, even though I don't think we'll have the problem of ice formation like we did in the Season 0 server, because the Season 0 server, we had this platform further up in the air, and we were in a nice, cozy, mountainous biome that was freezing everything. So, basic idea. This is what we're going to build. And uh, let's go make that happen. All right. So here's the area that we've marked off for the iron farm. Uh, it's going to be down at this end of the community center. I need to level out the terrain a little bit. And then I'll start getting the foundation of the building itself in place. Rather than bore you with uh, all the time that's going to take. We're just going to do a quick cut. And et voila, the base will be done. Be very, very quiet. There's some other people interested in our building activities, too. They can just go marching right along that way. All right, let's sleep. Okay, there we go. 
I had to fix a uh, mismeasurement I made with the original perimeter design. So just in case you're wondering about the size and dimensions of this joker, the inside square is going to be a 9x9 nine nine square. That is going to be our catch, storage, and redstone. And then we've got a one block wide perimeter on the edge. Not the prettiest because it is going to look a little boxy and whatnot. But again, uh, this is not the permanent design. This is just what we're getting for the moment. So uh, now that we got the foundation and everything measured out, and I, I did the grid pattern partly so that way it's easier for you to see and partly because nobody's going to see the inside anyway. So something quick and simple. And uh, now that that's done, let me go about and get the boxes in place and some of the other interiors for the storage portion of this endeavor. Okay, so now we've got the basic part of the storage system in place. Uh, all we've got are the large chests in place. We got a barrel instead of the chest in the dev world for the bone meal. Because uh, that shouldn't be piling up nearly as fast as the iron. And if it is, then well, we, we got other things to talk about. And I need to find a way to cut an access door in here. Uh, I forgot to march off, mark off exactly where I wanted to put something like that. So um, I'll punch a hole in the back for now. And just know that that door is probably going to get moved before too long. Because uh, I do want to have regular access to the redstone internals and uh but not uh <laughs> but not lose access to some of the other stuff so uh while i'm here let me go ahead and get a few material that's for the top half this is for the bottom half i'm gonna need the comparator that 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 those and those there we go so we can actually build the collection system or the filtration system I should say for our poppies because what we're going to do is we're going to have a hopper chain coming in off the top matter of fact let me uh, pause right here and double check my diagrams okay so I got a little carried away I, I went to reference my diagram and then started building a little bit more building a little bit more and ooh, I just realized I need need to light up that interior things are going to go bad if I don't throw a little more light in here okay that'll hold us for the moment I'll get better lights in there and torches so I'm going to go through and see whatever iron we have left over and finish up that array there but what I need to do right now is remove that torch I just put and we need to get the filter in because the idea is we want to filter out the poppies that come from the iron farm, drop them into that composter and get the um, get, get the bone meal that'll come out of that right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to get a block coming right below this one here. Because we're going to get our comparator pulling a signal off of there. We're going to go one, two back. We're going to go one down, one down, one back up. And from here, we're going to put our torch there, which is going to power this block, which is going to lock that hopper going into the, uh, the composter system. We're going to get a repeater which will take whatever power is coming out of this block and carry it on down the way. We're going to get ourselves a little ladder. <laughs> Scaffolding is one of the best things to ever make it into this game, I swear. We're going to realize that we forgot to grab our redstone dust and it's night out. Okay, night has passed. We've also got a couple of lanterns that will drop around uh, various places here. Matter of fact, we'll drop one right there. We'll drop one in the back corner there. We'll drop one in the back corner here. And we'll drop one more right there. And between that and the glowstone in the floor, we should be good. Yeah, we'll throw one more uh, over the ceiling here once we get 
don't think put in there. All right, so like I was saying, we're going to get a comparator signal off of here. You know what? We'll drop that there. We're using a data pack that adds a redstone wrench, probably the best thing. Uh, Moyang, include this so we can do stuff like that instead of trying to figure out the weird geometry of uh, <laughs> uh, of how to position yourself just so to place it in the direction you want. Just give us a wrench to turn it. We don't need full-on debug stick. Okay, so this is going to be the item hopper that filters out the poppies. Basically, things are going to come down through this hopper here. If it's a poppy, it'll drop into this hopper here. If it's not, it'll carry on its way and then go into the iron bits all the way down the row. So these, this first column will fill up first, the second column will fill up next, etc., cetera, et cetera. And uh, that will continue on its way. And before I forget, let me also drop that guy right there. And like I did with the ones above him that I'll show you in just a minute, we're going to get him facing down. Why? because I like the way they look. It doesn't actually matter that they're facing down. That, that's all me. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our filter item. It can be any item you don't want to go through. I recommend giving it an actual name. That way you don't have to worry about something accidentally, you know, getting tossed into the system, like somebody throwing a potato for some strange reason into your system. Not that we've ever seen that happen. And by renaming it, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, so we've got an item that is going to bring that up there. And then we're going to drop these in. That should stop at 21. Yes, there we go. So because these five items are here in the hopper, what's going to happen is, is an item comes into this hopper. The one down below is going to see if it can pull first. If it is a rotten potato named filter potatoes, but you got to give it the French spelling of filter, then it will pull it, or if it's a poppy, it'll pull it. When one more poppy goes into the system, this signal strength will go one higher, meaning this block will now be powered. Once this block is powered, this repeater is going to power this block here, which will turn off this torch, which will unlock that hopper there, letting the poppy drop into the next one down which will then feed it into there and it'll go through the composter and eventually we'll get bone meal. Et voila. And that's pretty much how the system is going to go. So we're going to, we're going to take what you see in this slice here and carry it all the way across as we have uh, materials to do so. Matter of fact, since I know that's going to go there, we can go ahead and get those guys just like that. There we go. That at least clears up a spot in my inventory. <laughs> Now, the other thing that I did get done while I was forgetting about uh, stopping to <laughs> record bits and pieces is we got our floor in up here. So this corner is going to be our killing corner. This is the input hopper into the whole system below. Instead of a three by three grid of hoppers, we've only got the one. This should be more than enough intake for what the farm yields because each pod of three villagers is only going to yield one golem every 30 seconds. So at best, we're going to have two golems at a time every 30 seconds. That, that's the maximum throughput that this farm's going to do with just two pods. So this should be more than enough input to handle that. I just need to finish building up these walls and then get the water streams going. And with that... We should be pretty close to done with the collection system. Well, until I come up with a little more lumber and see if I can't finish up these hoppers now. Arcadius was kind enough to give us a few blocks of iron for the purposes of building this project. Uh, it is not lost on me that you need lots of iron to make a good functional iron farm and storage. So let me uh, do a quick cut right here, finish building up the collection area, and then we'll go from there. All right, collection system is done. I've got all the water in place. The only thing missing is the bucket of lava on the corner there. But since I'm not fond of burning myself up, I'm saving that for the very end. Um, or at least right before I get a zombie in there. Uh, one of the two. Because um, I get a funny feeling while I'm building the next few bits, I, I'm going to fall into this thing a couple of times. And I'd, I'd rather have... Uh, 
no lava there. Just saying. So let me go ahead and get a couple of things. I've got the scaffolding up 20 blocks from the center of the collection pit because we want to make sure that our golems drop away from the villagers uh, greater than 16 blocks. The golems about two and a half, three blocks high, uh, which would put us 19 blocks. So 20, 20 gives us a nice safe, safe bit with an extra block margin just in case. And uh, even though they'll die long before the 30 second cooldown is up, um, I just want to make sure that we get enough space just in case. All right, let me grab a few things for the next part of the build, and then we'll uh, we'll get to that. Okay, I've got an inventory full of things, and yeah, I know, I originally said I wasn't going to put the lava in there, but I got a little worried that by the time I get the rest of this built, it might start producing golems before I could get the lava in place. So, let's, uh, let's get risky. All right, we've got our cauldron. This is going to be the place that is going to hold our zombie uh, as soon as he becomes available. I'm going to go ahead and put... Uh, oh, <laughs> I didn't think that went through. Uh, <laughs> I was going to use the uh, honey blocks because they can be broken by hand without any trouble. Except for the part that uh, it's not quite without trouble. All right. Uh, I should have brought a couple of junk blocks with me. All right. Can... Can I get the scaffolding? No. Um, well then, this was this was not as uh, not as smart a move as I thought it was going to be. Let me uh, let me go get a couple of dirt blocks. I'll be right back. Okay, dirt blocks in hand. Let's try this again. We got our cauldron. We're going to need oh, one, two blocks worth of space. That is where our zombie is going to go. He's actually going to sit in the bowl of the cauldron, which will bring him down just enough that uh, our bobbing villagers will be in and out of his line of sight. And with them bobbing in and out of his line of sight, it, it, it'll scare them, but not so much that it causes the server to crash. I know, that's kind of a weird, weird issue to have. All right, so we've got our one block, two block. And then our platform is going to start here. Now I'm going to put a dirt block as a placeholder for the moment, knowing that that's going to be a wood plank eventually. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this hole open so we can drop our zombie in as soon as we get a chance. So we're going to make a five by five. So that's two out in that direction, two out in this direction, and two and two so we're going to make our five by five platform like you saw in the design and then our two pods off of either side let me get the platform built minus the water and uh i'll be right back all right so here is our little five by five platform when we get finished building the pods off on this side and this side the water is going to be flowing. We're going to have a row of source blocks going down the center here, and then another one off to one side or the other. It doesn't really matter which. You just want two rows of source blocks pushing off to one side or the other to get the uh, golems off of here as quickly as possible. And those fence gates will hold the water back while allowing the golems through on either side and those fences will keep them from going off in a direction we don't want. Although, I guess with the, the sense we got a square down below, we probably could have used these as fence gates, except I'd be worried about them falling onto the villager pods. So there is at least that. And now what we need to do is we need to get, well, looks like we need to sleep, and then we, <laughs> we need to get a little bit of scaffolding across to, uh, to the other parts of the server. Matter of fact, I wonder if I were to put this here, duck, hang on, can I fall into this myself? Maybe not. One, two, three, all right. And if I leave that open, can I cut that right there? Oh yeah, beautiful. Okay, good. 
That will be the uh, trap door that I drop the zombie through when I get a chance. All right, let me uh, let me jump down, sleep, and then we'll get started on one of the pods. All right, that was a little harrowing, uh, but we do seem to have everything in place for this pod. Uh, creative use of scaffolding, and everything does appear to be about the right space. So. I've got my three beds. We've got the glass block. That is the only valid spot for them to end up standing on. And a waterlogged trapdoor that will cause them to bounce up and down. Uh, going in and out of sight of that zombie that's going to be over there. I left myself a little hole. And I didn't bother putting the lights across the top yet. Like I'm going to put in soon enough. Because I still got to get the villagers in here. My thought is to get a water elevator going off the uh, off the back side here. Actually, let me do this right here. And probably going to be no fun trying to do this off of the uh, off of the bed. All right. Um All right, I'll figure that out before too long. And let me get a, yeah, let me figure out how to get a, a, a nice little water elevator up to drop a villager around and drop three of them bad boys over in this side. Uh, but I'll do that as soon as I get the other one built and the zombie in place. So let me duplicate this right here over on this side. All right, and it looks like we've got that other villager pod all set. We still at the hole in the top to drop the villagers in. We got a waterlogged trap door on a glass block. No other blocks that are valid standing points. And that should be it. I will eventually have to put a slab there. And that's where these two extra slabs came in. The hole there and the hole down there. And that extra block goes in there, which is where we're going to drop in the zombie. And it looks like... Other than the water up top there, which will be the last thing to go in. It looks like we've got everything ready to go. So let me tear this down and then figure out how... Oops, too quick. Let me figure out how I'm going to get a zombie up there. Yeah. Okay. I'll be right back. Okay, that was a little more frustrating than it should be. We finally got this guy in here. And I don't know what happened to his hat. It seemed to have gone away. So I'm hoping that uh, I can go ahead and toss this this way. And will he pick it up? Or do I got to get it closer to him? Come on. You know you want to pick it up. I don't want to get that close to you. There we go. So now he's got the cap on. That means that he won't burn if he gets into sunlight. That trap door is keeping him from getting out of the cauldron. And, you know, belts and suspenders. We're going to go ahead and name tag this guy just the same. That way uh, we don't have to worry about if uh, something happens to him. I am going to try to rescue my honey blocks, though. You know what? You can have them. I'll go make more. All right. <laughs> Let me get this uh, dirt scaffolding down, but since I'm up here, I can go ahead and get that squared away there. That goes back in there, and these can go out this way. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a water source in the center here and another water source in the center here. And they should mix, allowing us to do this and then do that. That should give us a full row of water sources across each way. We can go like that and like that. And we can do the same basic idea back here. So we can go very carefully one there and one there. And pick one up here. Go one there. And that gives us two rows 
of water sources flowing out to either side. So no matter where the thing spawns, it should go on its way out. Now that we got these guys squared away, and now that we got this squared away, let me clear up the scaffolding. All right, let me sleep, then clear up the scaffolding, and then we can get the villagers squared away. Onward and forward. Okay, so it took a little longer to tear that down. I still haven't gotten the second side done, but we've already got 16 iron. That is awesome. However, it's getting late as I'm recording this, so I'll record the next bit tomorrow morning, and uh, I'll AFK over here in the meantime. So it is 22.19, or... 1019, depending on uh, how you handle the 24-hour clock. And we'll see where that leaves when I pick up recording in the morning. Okay, it is now tomorrow morning, and I wanted to check on the progress. Oh, 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 oh. I wanted to get slaughtered by zombies because I, I just slept. Yes, that is exactly what I wanted. Lighting project is definitely in the near future. Okay. So, I was going to see what 12 hours worth of production with only one cluster of three was going to look like, except uh, somewhere after accumulating a stack and a half, that guy got stuck on the glass. Now, I'm not sure if he fell there or if he hopped up on the scaffolding that I have on the inside, since he is, it looks like, in the right place for that. And unfortunately, because I built those guys as low as possible while still being outside the detection range, he is now technically inside that pod's detection range for an iron golem. That means that um, he is within 16 blocks of those guys, so as long as he sits there, the iron golem detection algorithm will go, oh, hey, there's already a golem. No need to, uh, no need to create another one. And, yeah, so it's just going to stop there. <sighs> All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish getting the three guys up on the other side. Then I'm going to clear out the scaffolding. Because when I ran this in the test world for four or five hours, I did not have a single guy fall on the glass. That's why I wasn't too terribly worried. Um given that there was a four block gap between the falling point and the wall. And I really, I really think he just climbed up the, uh, the scaffolding. So we'll get the other pod squared away. We'll do another series of AFKs and I will report back on the live stream this coming Tuesday. That'll be tomorrow on the release date, whether or not we had any further issues with golems, uh, spawning in places that they shouldn't in the meantime. While I prepare to work on this, let me uh, see if I can't nudge this guy somewhere. Go on, go somewhere. I'm going to try not to punch you, because you punch back and hard. There we go, to the sweet by and by. And then, uh, now that he's outside of their detection range, within another 30 seconds or so, we should start seeing them fall again, and we'll go from there. So, um... I'm going to quick cut right here, get the tower built, and then I'll be right back. <laughs> I just realized that uh, I, I forgot I was going to build the tower, record the next clip, and then go. And I've already got two of these guys in here. Uh, <laughs> it's one of, the, one of those funny little things that, you know, you, you just get kind of so wrapped up in this thing. Um, in the first episode, I recorded some of the time lapse in between doing some of the stuff and I, I, I liked it, but I wasn't sure if it was necessary. So this one's going to be quick clips with none of the in-between stuff and uh, see how that goes. I'm probably going to go back to the first to the first method after this where I, I just insert little clips of stuff getting done. 
As you can see, I got the hitboxes turned on because it makes breaking the boats without hitting these guys easier. Now, once I get the third guy in here, I've got to let these guys get enough nighttime to sleep. And one, one of the key things that makes this farm work is these villagers will need to sleep for at least part of the night every couple of nights. Otherwise, they will stop producing iron. Because there are three conditions for an iron golem to start spawning, just like that. Uh, that, that was perfect timing. They need to have worked within so many days. They need to have slept within so many days. And the panic flag needs to be alerted. Uh, but not continuously. So that's why we got them bobbing in water. So they bob in and out of sight of that zombie in the cauldron. Which will alternately turn on and off the panic flag. So we've got that condition that will be continuously met. They've got the beds and the workstations. And they will work throughout the day. So that part's not too hard. We just got to make sure that every couple of days they start, they, they st at least get a little bit of sleep. They don't even need to sleep through the whole night. They need to just have lain down in a bed for a few seconds, which is all they're going to do when they're scared by the zombie anyway. Um, also, it looks like the reason why we had the, the iron golem on the glass was because he was climbing the scaffolding that I had left on the inside for when I was still working on different parts of the farm. Since I don't plan on crawling out the inside anytime soon, I removed the scaffolding and we'll see if we get any more. So far, nobody has gotten back out or landed on a lip, which leads me to believe that it really was it really was them uh, pathing to the scaffolding and climbing up the scaffolding. And even then, it seems to only happen when they fall off the side closer to the scaffolding. That's a lot of scaffolding to say repeatedly over and over again. So let me boat this last guy in here, clear out the tower, and then we'll take a look at how things have completed. All right, tower is cleaned up. Our three villagers are up in there, and while we were cleaning it up, we gave them enough nighttime to sleep. So we're getting one, two, one or two golems falling off the edge every 30 seconds or so. And so as long as everything continues to work, we should be all set for iron. We're noticing that uh, already one of the big differences between... Oh, see, <laughs> that that's... Remember, we had the three and a half stacks at the start. That's just while I've been working on this, once I got rid of the scaffolding that was keeping the uh, golems from crawling up on the edge. So... Uh, we should be all set for iron for a little bit. I mean, kind of, maybe. I wouldn't mind a little bit more. As long as I make sure that the villager pods are at least 11 blocks apart, I could set up another platform just like that, a little bit higher up, and double the efficiency, or double the yield of this farm. And you can keep stacking them on top, on top, on top. You just got to make sure that the pods are far enough apart. If I remember right from the from the video, that, um, that means that they need to be at a minimum 11 blocks apart. I would probably make them a little bit more because uh, if we're already talking about uh, changes and revisions and regrets and that sort of thing, I do regret that I made it the absolute minimum distance to get those golems out of the detection range. I thought that was going to be a benefit in making it easier to get up at these pods for maintenance. Uh, because when we did this in Season 0, getting up to those pods to fix any issues or troubleshoot any problems was a pain. And that's with an elytra. Because we had made it so high up in the sky. Um... This time we have a different problem. At least on the last go round, when we had issues with collection, it didn't influence production. Now any problems with collection will absolutely influence problems with production, like we saw when one of the golems got stuck up on the glass wall there. So if I were to do it again, I probably would have put that about three to five blocks higher. That way, if a golem was standing on the edge of the rim, he would still technically be out of the detection range of those two villager pods, and we wouldn't have to worry about anything untoward happening there. So that, that would be the one minor change. At this point, I've got them in. I've got everything done. 
That was the work of many, many hours. Yeah, well into last night and a few hours this morning just to get those last three villagers in because uh, moving villagers is not fun. Uh, boats and pistons to get them up a block and all that good fun. But as you can see, this is definitely doing very nicely. You've seen how many golems have fallen just while I was giving this explanation. So uh, get ready for uh, get ready for a thumbnail somewhere along this line. Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe if I walk just a little bit further forward, I can get that right in there. Oh, yeah. Bam. Instant thumbnail. There we go. All right. So this is where I switch on over and say thank you for watching along. I hope you enjoyed the episode. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to get notified when new episodes get uploaded. I also live stream from the Coffee Craft server on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Tuesdays at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. There are links to Mixer and Twitch in the description below. Definitely join along. Follow on your platform of choice. I simulcast them both. And uh, hopefully I will see you next time.